entertainment. Never seems to be a shortage of it. And 2023 marked the year of the ultimate upgrade in entertainment, which is AI. AI is not a new thing. It's been around for a very long time. I think it just hasn't been as public and as easily accessible and procedurally generated for the audiences of today. So for a lot of modern people, they think this is just something that happened overnight. But even myself as an artist, I think it's a great time to be alive. I use it. Everybody I know uses it. It's fun. We were already using it on our phones. Photoshop has been using it. AI was around from the 1950s. And look, I'm not naive enough <laughs> and petty enough to think that AI is going to leave if I make a stink about it. I understand why it's here, why it's taking off. And as an artist, I've adapted to it. Understandably, there are going to be concerns with anything technological wise that advances society. People will always take something that was meant for good and use it nefariously, such as making people do things that they ordinarily wouldn't do. The deep fake situation. And so when I see articles like this, explicit AI generated Taylor Swift images continue to proliferate on X, Instagram, and Facebook, I'm not surprised. I mean, everyone knows who Taylor Swift is, but this isn't the first person who's had this happen to them. Many celebrities have had this happen. As a matter of fact, I think there is a place, yes, there is, that you can go to specifically for adult themed celebrity deep fakes. And I wondered why this was trending. Understandably, I can see if she's upset about it, people putting her in questionable situations, showing her doing things that she wouldn't ordinarily do to other people who are also real people, why it would be an issue. And it also brings up the need for a wider discussion because people can say, oh, she should get over it. While we agree with freedom of expression and freedom of speech, you're also using someone's likeness that can potentially damage their reputation. It's easy to say that she's a celebrity, she should just get over it. But then if you ask the question back to people like this, how would you feel if it was your mom or your sister or your daughter who people were doing that to? Would you have the same energy? The thing is you can't stop the internet from interneting. And I'll be honest, I don't really know how exactly we would fix a problem like this right now because there's an age old thing too. The more you try to get rid of something or censor it is the more it's gonna crop up. I think for parody's sake, freedom of expression is definitely okay. A lot of these people are hypocrites though because when it comes to Taylor Swift, they don't want her touched. But if it's anybody else, they do not care. And they'll even join in on the fun as well. When it's easy to prove that something is fake, it's easy to overlook it as harmless amusement and a transformative means of expressing playful jabs. Everyone is in the public sphere has to understand this, regardless of how annoying it is. Now, understandably, if they're leaking private photos of her and her family address or damaging her reputation. Yes, there's definitely a case to be had here. However, attacking every AI meme that's simply taking jabs at her calls for this precedent of kiboshing all procedurally generated art expression or jokes. I agree that people shouldn't profit off of other people's likeness and shouldn't try to damage their reputation or bring harm to them through leaking private info, videos, or generating images that would tarnish their reputation. I'm sure if you're a guy and someone goes to your profile and takes your pictures and then they do some kind of AI deep fake showing you in a compromising situation and they make you do something that you ordinarily wouldn't do and then they just spread that all around the internet so that people think that you actually did this, you're gonna feel a certain way. Come on. Delete it. You know, the same goes if they do that to your mom or your girlfriend. I agree that there needs to be a line without removing freedom of expression. You can express yourself without abusing people's likeness. We already have laws like that with copyright. You know, you can't go into a movie and use someone's name or likeness in certain cases, especially if you're going to be profiting from it. Disney and many other companies have established this. Nintendo and various studios and franchises have done the same. They don't even want certain characters or even their name of their company featured in a movie unless they have consent to use their likeness or their franchise or what have you. I can't come on here making an avatar using Taylor Swift's face and pass it off as my original character while profiting from it. I can't do journalism and present an article or post photos of Taylor Swift engaging in questionable activities in a way that people could easily mistake as being real. However, for parody's sake, for some artistic situations, I don't think anything is wrong with procedurally generating Taylor Swift's face in a situation that is outlandish or making it very clear that it's fake. I mean, if that's the case, then we get to start banning actual artists who draw situations like this. For example, if you create a parody account showing Taylor Swift chasing down Hitler with an AK, everyone knows that's fake. I understand the need for this conversation though, because there seems to be 
quite a few lines, fine lines at play here. And even though these are celebrities, we have to also be empathetic that it could happen to us or our family members. I mean, you have people right now who are able to fake conversations with cell phone text emulators. I mean, this case that Digital Derek covered, I love him by the way, you should definitely go give him a follow, but this case <laughs> where I was watching where this girl straight up ruined this guy's reputation by flaming uh, Fosley that he gave her and a bunch of people AIDS, making him look absolutely crazy, she faked all of this. And Digital Derek actually covers it on his channel. A few others did as well. But when you follow the story, this man was being doxxed. I mean, he was made to look completely unhinged and his family were harassed. He was harassed to the point where he wanted to unalive himself. I hate using that terminology, but you know YouTube. And he had to basically come out and prove that he was innocent by showing his medical records. And it turned out that the woman was the one who was lying all along and fabricated that whole conversation and everything. She even came out and admitted that she'd been lying. Oh shit, he posted the fucking receipts. Cause that is crazy. That means even the texts were a lie. People are just creating crazy fake texts. What the fuck? And then the girl made a post saying, I'm really sorry, y'all. Hope y'all can find a place in your hearts to forget. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. I really regret my action. Fuck. F oh, let me just stop saying that, but for real. And then about this situation, about how she lied. Because of all this going on and he know it's false. Y'all don't know how this man feel. Whoever... I keep saying it's false. I keep saying it's false. He tagged me in his Okay, and exactly. That's what I'm saying. If we know it's false, everybody know it's false. Somebody need to go. On these pages, let them know that it's false. Y'all need let I'm instead of just letting this shit drag on, this thing get you feel me? His name get tarnished like this. It ain't right. Like you gotta clear this up. You gotta like no cap. You gotta clear this shit up. You need you need to go apologize this man or something. No doubt. No doubt. But you know, the damage to his reputation had already been done. And the lie got so big that people now believe this about this person, despite the fact she came out with the truth later and he absolved himself. And his privacy was compromised because of what she did. Now, this is not an AI situation, but you see where you see where we're going with this. A very fun program that was meant to simulate text messages was used nefariously. And this isn't the first time it happened. How many times have people gone to jail or ended up in hairy situations because someone faked text messages and made them look like they said something that they actually didn't say? You always hear the saying, make sure you have it in writing. And there are programs out there that do this. <laughs> and this was well before this type of AI was mass released to the public. And yet this girl was not facing any charges, whereas this guy does have a legitimate leg to stand on when it comes to suing her. The problem is people aren't getting punished for their actions. So on one hand, I can see where this can potentially harm free speech. But on the other hand, the reason why this is even an issue is that some individuals take things too far. Do I think it's right to get mad at every single meme made about you as a celebrity? No, that's petty. That screams, I don't want anybody making fun of me. I'm perfect and I'm supposed to always be shown a perfect light and every single person on the earth is supposed to love me or else. They're gonna be people who don't like you. I know, it's probably alien for Taylor Swift because she's probably always had people like her, but take it from someone who's been bullied and an outcast, people will always dislike you for the dumbest things that sometimes are not even about you. You can't stop everybody. <laughs> These Taylor Swift's AI pictures is proof that all men should start their lives in jail and have to prove they're a good person to get out. <laughs> Wow. This comment is proof that people like you should start their lives in a psychiatric ward and prove that you're not crazy to get out. You see where the precedent kind of gets uncomfortable? How do you say something like this? And then this guy's like, send the men in your family first. Okay, because they're good and it wouldn't be a problem. If you have a problem with this and maybe you have something to hide, you know every single man in your family is a good person. Then if that's the case, they didn't start out in jail. How did they prove that they were good? Would you have been okay if we went back in time and put your family in jail so they could prove that they're good? And where do women start? That's a good question. Somebody else asked that. Where would the women start their lives? What a sexist take. Like, this is so weird. And you see, you have the freedom of expression 
to say some brain dead sociopathic shit like this. People like you should be locked up. Anyway, I'm leaving this up here right now so people can see because obviously this person wanted people to see this is public. So having people like this, as I said, does not help. Of course, unhinged people like this are not Taylor Swift's fault. I hate this narrative though, that when fans come out to protect someone they like, it's somehow the person's fault as if the celebrity is God and is puppeteering the strings of every individual that follows them, even though they don't even know those individuals exist. The individuals need to be held accountable for sayings like this. Like, what was even that? That doesn't even make any sense. Now, an article says that the explicit deep fakes began circulating on social media on Thursday. The pictures mainly proliferated on X, formerly known as Twitter, but they were also posted to Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. They were additionally uploaded to Celeb Jihad, a satirical website known for sharing leaked and often intimate videos and photographs of public figures. So the Jihad uh, website knows, or people know that this is fake. And the question really is, where is the line drawn here? While I understand that this could be harmless, especially if you know it's fake, because let's be honest, when I discovered what Rule 34 was, I was like, oh damn. And there are people, artists, who actually draw celebrities in situations like this too. Like there was actually a niche for this before people were drawing celebrities in these positions. Now they weren't profiting off of it. It was just art, I guess, and people knew it was fake. But do we now take down those very realistic art forms or people posing as them? And then if it's those people like Henry Cavill, there's an actor or a person who actually looks a lot like him and people get mistaken, <laughs> they think that's him. Is he using Henry's likeness? But that's also his likeness. But then I guess the other question is when the AI looks too real, that it's hard to decipher what is real and what is fake, is that where the problem lies? Now, when people look at this, they know for certain, hey, this is Taylor Swift, when in fact they're wrong and it's not Taylor Swift. Is that where the issue lies? Like if somebody's livelihood or their reputation is directly affected by the perception of people not knowing whether or not something's real, is that where we need to draw the line for certain laws like this? Is there actually a lawsuit to be had here? That's a really good question. And to really help answer, instead of people just writing it off, a really good thing to do would be to picture yourself again, or your family member, your daughter, your sisters, your girlfriend in those situations, your girlfriend in a room with different guys going toe to toe, head to head, ass to ass with your girlfriend, you know, doing a challenge to get all of them in her. Like you would have a problem with that, bro. Like you would really have a problem with that. And likewise for girls with their boyfriends or their significant others or what have you, you would have a problem, especially when people cannot determine what is real and what is not. People will actually pass this around and be like, this actually happened. And you, you never know, maybe this, this is good for certain things like politics and stuff because they can just say, well, I didn't say that. You don't know if it's AI generated or not. Is there a way to even determine what is AI and what is not? Of course, we need to have some laws. I do agree that there needs to be some kind of kibosh without outright coming out against, going against freedom of expression, but also protecting people. Because people have gone to jail for less. Before AI was even a thing to the public, people have gone to jail just based on stuff people said about them without any evidence. Imagine now if you have an AI video of someone doing something to you, like a girl saying, my husband beat me or my boyfriend beat me or this guy who I don't know that I liked, but he doesn't know I like him and he doesn't know I exist. Um, he hit me or he's the father of my child. And she actually puts out a video, an AI video with his face that people can look at and say without any shadow of a doubt, that is the guy, we saw you doing this, we saw you touching her. You see where I'm going with this? So it's easy for people to come out and say, oh, it's Taylor Swift being petty. Maybe there's a little bit of that, but there is a concern when it comes to this stuff. I can still appreciate the power of AI and the ingenuity of it while also letting people know that there are issues like, cars. We don't just have people driving nonsensically down the road. Now we have traffic lights. We have seat belts. Every invention or technological prowess has come with kiboshes, with laws for a reason, because humans are cray cray. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? It's a very interesting discussion to have around this, because I'm not gonna lie, it's entertaining, but I also see the harm in it, because you always have those people who will go overboard. Pick one topic. People will go overboard. People will use children. Let's, let's, let's put that out there too. That's also something nobody's talking about. You can use children as well. Now, 
we don't need real children. We just need their faces. And then we could sell it on these websites for people who want to see them in questionable situations. Is that wrong? Even though no actual children are being exploited. Now, I used to have the stance, or I still do to some degree with animation, that if they want to portray something, you know, of course, it's it's it depends on what it is. But you can get away with it if adults are voicing it or if it's an actual animation, no children are being exploited. But then here's the other thing, the crux of the argument too against that is what if it's procedurally generated? It's not an actual child. It's a AI generated kid in this situation. No actual children are being harmed. Is that immoral? I still think it, but then you see what I'm talking about? This is a discussion that people are so afraid to have. And it's good that we have these discussions because AI is not going anywhere. It's only going to get more prolific as time goes on. So we need to ask these questions to avoid all the terror that's going to come about if we don't address this now. But let's have a discussion, guys. <laughs> Try to be nice to each other. Let's not attack each other personally. Don't get too in your feelings that you start attacking people. But we need to be able to talk like human beings to each other about things that actually could become a concern is already becoming a concern in entertainment, in society, and all of that. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer. Thank you.